The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, Camtel, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome once again to this learning session. I remain your teacher, Abanda Consolans, a pedagogic supervision teacher. Let's continue. And to begin our lesson, we first of all go to the correction of our homework. What did we have as homework again? It reads, the educative team and community, community are structures made up of all persons, such as parents, teachers, people, the learners, partners, and agents of education that intervene in education. Now, with your knowledge of the course and of the last lesson, answer this. What were you supposed to do? You were asked to outline three roles of the educative community in the functioning of the school. The role of the educative community in the function of the school. And remember last time we said we can still call it the educational community or the education community. They remain the same. The notions remain the same. Check your work. Let's correct together. The very first that we have is the transmission of knowledge. When we talk of the transmission of knowledge, we are looking at teachers. Teachers teach learners in a classroom situation. So their main function or role is to transmit knowledge. They don't only transmit the knowledge and leave it at that level, but they have to enable, facilitate um, the development of competencies. Competencies at this level is concerns the learners. We build up their competencies and even develop their skills in whatsoever discipline it is. Another aspect is the financing of education. How does the educative community finance education? We want to look at it from the point of view of parents where they pay obligatory fees or school fee, examination fee, and even the PTA levy. There it is financial. We equally have material financing. We have territorial um, decentralized territorial collectivities that's still fall within the educative community, that finance education through councils. Councils provide minimum packages to teachers of schools. These minimum packages are mostly didactic materials that teachers use within the classroom situation, such as pencils, pens, chalk, and so forth. Their role doesn't just end at financing. We have equally the promotion of co-curricular activities. When we talk of co-curricular activities, we want to take an example of sporting activities. It can be done or it is carried out mostly on learners where there is competition in, in, in sporting activities. We have an example of the FENASCO games that comes up mostly in February of each academic year where learners are involved and the council comes in to promote it one way or the other and ensure that it moves on well. 
tem tem amote tem zabike mane tem bien nya ne njo biayen with that we get into our lesson of the day what are we supposed to do today we want to look at next thing which is pedagogic inspection <laughs> pedagogic inspection is an evaluation activity we should be very careful it is an evaluation an activity amongst the activities of pedagogic supervision we said the way to and we have accompanying activities and evaluation activities and pedagogic inspection is an example of an evaluation activity in this topic what do we want to look at we want to look at the actors and their missions we will look at the various types of inspections we will equally look at the stages and activities of pedagogic supervision not forgetting the instruments and tools of pedagogic inspection and with this we will be treating four different lessons so for today we will be looking at the actors of pedagogic inspection and their missions so today's lesson is on actors and missions of pedagogic inspection in order to do the work right we need to have an overview of the lesson the course the lesson itself so we we'll begin the lesson with the course objective we we'll equally look at the prerequisite what learners know and as for the objective we must attain it what do we want to attain at the end of this lesson what do we want the learners to know at the end of the lesson to achieve this we have a problem situation which will usher us into the learning activities of the day so the learning activity is a response to a problem situation then we have an application exercise or application exercises that will make us or make the learners better understand the lesson and at the end of it all there is a homework exercise an exercise that will be done at home as for the learning objectives we want that by the end of the lesson everyone present every learner should be able to define pedagogic inspection audit and control and secondly present the actors of pedagogic inspection and their mission as prerequisite what we already know we know that everyone present knows the members is aware of the members or knows the members of the educative community or educational community let's get to our lesson of the day with this problem situation it states listen attentively while i read Mr. Wono, a newly appointed regional delegate for basic education, has a duty to visit educational structures. Being his first appointment, he decides to seek your help for more enlightenment on the actors and missions of pedagogy inspection. He wants to know the actors, and he wants to know the missions of these actors. This is just to avoid making any mistake or error when it comes to all of that in in the exercise of his functions. And in order to do this, what do we do? We define first of all inspection. What we define first of all pedagogic inspection, audit, and control. Audit and control. a concepts that move alongside the notion of pedagogic inspection secondly we present the actors of pedagogic inspection we will not only present the the actors but we will equally outline the missions of these actors and when the actors are cited it is known as a pedagogic inspection chain we we'll begin with the response which we call now on the learning activity we very we said the very first thing is to define what is pedagogic inspection in few words we can say it is an investigation on the activities of an educational system 
an educational actor with the aim of determining the pertinence, the effectiveness of that particular act and looking at the activities, the impact of these activities on the educational system. We shouldn't forget that pedagogic inspection being an evaluation, it can still be a verification, it can still be an evaluation. And when it comes to audit, audit is a concept that moves alongside inspection. We say it's a systematic control, or we can still say it's an inventory on the functions of an educational structure based on explicit criterion with the aim of ameliorating that particular system or structure. In most cases, it is carried out by members of the pedagogic inspection chain. And there is an auditor, and there is a person that auditing is carried out on. It moves alongside the concept of control. Control on its own part is a verification of the administrative practices of an educational actor with the aim of ameliorating or enhancing professional competence. Now, what do we mean? We mean for somebody, for an action of an actor to be actually audited, they must first of all be controlled. And we realize that in most cases, auditing and control take place on the heads of educational institutions on the administrative practices. An example is a head teacher of a primary school. With that defined, those concepts defined, we come now to the pedagogic inspection chain. At the beginning, we said members of the pedagogic inspection chain are the actors that we'll talk about. And they are grouped at the national level, regional level, and the local level. Now, at the local, at the national level, who are those in charge? Who are the actors? We have, first of all, the Inspector General of Education, abbreviated IGE. We have the Inspectors of Pedagogy, who are different from the National Pedagogic Inspectors. At the regional level, we have the Inspector Coordinator of Education, abbreviated ICE, followed by Regional Pedagogic Inspectors and Regional Pedagogic Advisors. And at the local level, we will look at it in terms of the division, the subdivision, and schools. At the divisional level, we have divisional pedagogic advisors, the DPA. At the lower level, which is a subdivisional level where we have inspectorates, we have inspectors. And at the level of basic education, they are abbreviated IBE. And if we look at this local level, we know that schools are equally under them, the inspect schools. So not forget to mention schools. And at the level of schools, we have the head teachers and the teachers. Generally, inspection takes place at the national and regional levels once a year. And when we come down to the local level, it is twice and thrice respectively, which means that they are programmed, they are carried out, and there are specific actors that carried out inspections at particular moments. And when we talk once a year, twice a year, thrice a year, we mean the academic year. With these actors stated, let's move on to the missions of pedagogic inspection. The missions here are defined based on the actors that were stated. Remember, we said these actors are at the national level, regional level, and the local level. 
With this, it will be easier for the newly appointed delegate to situate himself and his missions. Being a regional delegate, he falls within the regional level. So we go move on so that he will be able to situate himself. This way you are helping him more to understand. At the national level, we said we have the IG. He has so many missions. Amongst the so many missions, we have this. He defines main pedagogic guidelines. When we talk of guidelines, pedagogic guidelines, it's on the code of conduct, how education will be carried out at every level, be it the national, the regional, and the local level. So there are code of conduct, rules that should be respected in the exercise of the pedagogic act. And this way, it makes the prestige or it promotes the prestige of the school and the educational system. Not just that, the IGE equally coordinates evaluation activities. When we talk of evaluation activities here, we'll look mostly at the level of certification. We'll look mostly at the level of inspection. If an inspection is to take place, it means he has coordinated that particular aspect and accorded his support to that or accepted or accepts that it should take place. Another aspect that is part of the IGE's mission is the application of educational policies. Every state has its policies that guide education. And our policies on education are mostly found in the 1998 Orientation Law on Education. With that, he ensures that those policies are applied at the level of the curriculum, at the level of the divisions, at the level of the regions, and even within the school or educational institutions. Now, looking at the IPs, that's inspectors of pedagogy, we realize that they come after the IGE. What do they do? When the IGE gives them the go ahead, they have to define and develop or elaborate the curriculum that is used in all the schools. To elaborate the curriculum, develop it, looking at the content, the course content, looking are the various subjects that are necessary. So the build up the curriculum as a whole and ensure that it is fit to be used in every school within a nation. And when this curriculum is elaborated, it is still part of their mission to control and evaluate its implementation. They must implement or evaluate its implementation at every level. And for this to be done, they have to equally evaluate textbooks that move along, that tie with the content, course content, the, the subjects that have been exploited or developed within that curriculum. And decide equally and or evaluate equally didactic materials that are necessary to be used to make the curriculum a better one. At the level now of the National Pedagogic Inspectors, who come after the Inspectors of Pedagogy, they have a mission to assist and train educational actors. This can be done in the form of seminars, in the form of conferences, in the form of pedagogic uh, training sessions like admissions. Their teachers are trained. And when we talk of pedagogic training here, we are talking of in-service training of actors at every level, be they teachers, head teachers, regional pedagogic inspectors, regional advisors, and all. 
And when that is done, we equally realize that they are the ones to elaborate or develop a yearly report on the evaluation of educational activities, which means they equally come in in the evaluation of educational activities. How do they do that? It means they carry out inspection. They are equally apt in carrying out inspection. Now at the regional level, what do we have? We have the regional pedagogic inspection, where we have the RPIs. Their main mission, where we say permanent mission, is pedagogic assistance, is animation and control. This means they have to assist actors at the regional level, actors at the divisional level, and even carry out visits and inspection where they'll be able to control, where they'll be able to assist teachers that have difficulties. They can equally assist during trainings, pedagogic trainings, where they assist those that have difficulties in the Teaching Learning Act. So when we see the next point, we look at the next aspect, we realize that they inspect teachers and the use of the curriculum. They equally organize internship for teachers and in-service training. And they coordinate distance learning programs, which is what is going on as part of government or the state measures to make education pleasurable. Amongst the, 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 the missions, we will not forget to cite that the equally validate documents produced at the higher level. Documents that have been produced in relation with the inspection general of education, which means that documents, any book, textbook that is produced must be validated beginning from the national level down to them. And these books, documents produced must be in line with what the state wants, the needs of the state, with what the state wants in terms of educational policies. We move ahead. Now on at the local level, we have identification and elaboration of needs at the subdivisional level. We are talking here of the inspectorates. At the level of the inspectorate, they have as mission to identify and elaborate the needs of their inspectorate. An example can be the lack of personnel, insufficient personnel, the lack of didactic material, the lack of support, material and financial support. Okay, that can be equally elaborated, identified and elaborated, which means it's at the level of the inspectorate, even at the level of the schools. This group equally evaluates the personnel, its personnel, that's the staff, both the administrative and teaching staff. And how is this done? Through pedagogic inspection, it is their mission. After every inspection, there is a need for follow-up. So at the local level, there is an organization of follow-up. Follow-up to assist teachers, assist every other actor. They don't only end at the level of follow-up, but they ensure the success of co-curricular activities in their various areas of jurisdiction. So within an inspectorate, there is assurance of co-curricular activities such as sporting activities taking place when the inspector at that level, the IBE, gives his accord. We shouldn't forget that at this level, we equally have the head teachers and teachers that's at the level of the schools. Those are equally actors of the local actors at the local level, excuse me. With this already done, we have responded 
to the worry of our newly appointed delegate. Now, let's look at a summary of what we have done. What did we say and what have we been saying? In the course of our lessons, we, all main concepts, notions, were defined such as pedagogic inspection, control and audit. Further, educational actors that made up, make up the pedagogic inspection chain were equally outlined from the national to the local level. And finally, the missions of each action, each actor, were presented and explained at three levels. We said the national, regional, and local levels. With that, I'll call on you people to do this exercise. It's just to test your knowledge and not to penalize you. I repeat. Basic education in Cameroon has a well-defined program for inspection with actors that inspect and those that are inspected. In the table, present the various actors and various periods for, for, for and various periods at the national and regional levels. What do we want? We want you to present the actors and when they carry out inspection. We have at the national level the Inspector General of Education, the Inspectors of Pedagogy, and the National Pedagogic Inspector. At the regional level, we have the Inspector Coordinator of Education, we have the Regional Pedagogic Inspector, we have the Regional Pedagogic Advisors. If that is said, if that is done, then it's okay. But if you can't present it in a tabular form, it's okay. We already said that at the national level, inspection is carried out once a year. While at the regional level, we, it is carried out once and twice a year. The year here is the academic year. And we are saying inspection takes place at the national and regional levels once. At the division and subdivisional levels, it is twice and thrice. Though we are not to treat the divisional and subdivisional levels, but it's good to note. Well, this here is homework for you. I read. Copy while I read. The pedagogic inspection chain is made up of educational actors from the national to the local level, amongst which are national and regional inspectors. With your knowledge of their attributes, state three practical missions of national pedagogic inspectors in the functioning of a school. As guideline, here are references. Go through them, read them, and that way you'll be able to carry out further research and even do your homework. Make sure you present your homework next class or during the next lesson because we'll begin the next lesson with a correction of the homework. And as of next class, as we have come to the end of this lesson, we will be looking at the various types of pedagogy inspections. Mane tambia ninya ne injo biayen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia ninya ne injo biayen